So what sorts of coding exist? And again, there is a wide uh, continuum of different forms of coding. I'm going to talk to you about two sorts, one being code book and reliability coding, and the other being a more reflexive approach. So to start, I'm going to talk about code book or code book reliability coding. This is using qualitative data, but in a more positivist logic. So here, what we're doing is we're developing a code book um, that aims to develop, you know, we develop codes before, reliable codes, and then we go to the data and we kind of fill those codes uh, with, the with the data that we've collected. So the point here is that we're trying to, as researchers, remove the potential for subjectivity or researcher bias in code development, hence this kind of positivist uh, logic. And this is done through either having multiple coders and specific coding descriptions so that these codes can then be used by any other researcher that wants to analyze this data using this code book. So the key terms here are generalizable, reliable, replicable, and so forth. The point is that you develop codes. This can be then collected into a code book and then you apply uh, these codes to the data in the sense that it's kind of an input output method. So an example of doing this would be, we might have a big research team who are all wanting to code, you know, this huge pile of documents that we've collected. And we wanna make sure that all the coders are coding the documents in the same way. So researchers in this team are trained in the code book, but not necessarily experts in the data, i.e. fake news, to use the same example. So how do we develop this code book? Sometimes the code book will be developed you know, through a first brief read through of all the data, sometimes through theory, sometimes uh, it'll just sort of already, we'll have already developed it. But the point is that then we, don't change that code book. That code book chain stays the same from the start to the finish. And sometimes you will see in these sorts of analyses a reliability uh, factor that is connected to the data. And this is a kind of a test that's done where, okay, we have our code book and the descriptions of the codes. Then we give it to three or four or however many researchers to analyze the same document. And if they've analyzed it the same, coded it the same, then the reliability factor is higher. This sounds great, but there's also many issues um, in the sense that it doesn't fully represent qualitative work in the sense that it's not a kind of qualitative uh, research logic. It erases the subjectivity and the reflexivity and to some extent the complexity of the data, which you know, for many qualitative researchers is the point of qualitative research. This I have you know, described a kind of more extreme side of uh, code book and reliability coding. And you can of course have code books that can change uh, through the coding process that are kind of less rigid. Um, but I think to describe one and then I'll describe the other side, hopefully you can understand that there's a uh, space in the middle. So to move to the other uh, form or kind of the other extreme, not extreme uh, of coding is reflexive coding. So this is at the other end of the spectrum. And here I'm really drawing a lot on the work of uh, Brown and Clark. And there'll be resources at the end of the video who uh, they have a really, really useful website uh, that explains thematic reflexive coding in much more detail than I'll go into here. And so I really encourage you if you're interested in this approach to explore their research further. So the way that they describe reflexive thematic coding is that it is a qualitative, we're using qualitative data and a qualitative logic. So it's not a positivist tradition and actually the researcher subjectivity is important. So this is rejecting the argument that research can be objective or that the researcher is just a neutral observer of the data. Instead, we're saying that that position actually hides uh, the researcher in a way that can be quite problematic and instead we should put the role of the researcher front and center. So in this way, the codes that we develop, we don't have a code book at the start and kind of input the data. 
output is the analysis. Instead, the coding itself evolves and changes through the coding process. So we can split codes, we can merge codes. You know, it's reflexive, hence the name. Reliability here is not the goal. Uh, instead, it's around the researcher's interpretation of the data. It's their storytelling. It's their story that they're telling, to put it a different way. This requires a high degree of immersion in the data and a real depth of engagement. So again, the process of documentation of your decisions, uh, your research diary and your dialogue with your theory becomes really essential uh, in order to justify those decisions that you're making. It also highlights the importance uh, of theory as a way of centering your research position and you know, could understand your research position as a lens onto that data, making this an explicit rather than an implicit uh, in your research process, which many of the critiques of the first uh, coding reliability approach that I explained would say that this uh, position of the researcher is always there, but it's implicit and therefore can actually replicate issues of bias. And the better thing is to sort of put it at front and centre. So this is not a quantitative content analysis. You know, to go back to the previous example, we're not counting how many times Donald Trump said fake news, but rather we're trying to explore the meaning of what he's saying. So when he says something and so forth, we're looking for those patterns. Also, there's not a code book that you start coding with. Instead, the boundaries of the code change in dialogue with the data. So you can develop new parent and child codes, regroup certain codes and so forth as you go further into the data analysis. You can also do levels of coding, uh, so first, second and third, which I'll explain soon. The key point here is that you want to explore and puzzle with your data. So if there's data that's not agreeing with your hypothesis or your uh, initial codes, sometimes that's the most interesting part. And so you don't want to just discount that, rather you want to sit with it, you want to puzzle with it, recode, make that data sort of work, change the story and so forth. 